Thailand has a big population of about 66 million inhabitants. Culture of snacking in Thailand. These are important drivers that will help the snack food business grow bigger and bigger. Snacks are relatively affordable for all layers of the society and is an essential aspect of people's social and day-to-day -day activities. Sometimes I wonder how a local favourite snack gets delivered so consistently to retailers around a nation of 66 million people. Many years ago, Madam Wang was inspired to carve out a market for themselves as she had a strong conviction that the products would take off in Thailand. I'm on a mission to find out how this one fast-growing company is taking the rain. Hi, my name is John. When the Wells Buyer Group actually invited me to go behind the scenes to understand their distribution business, obviously I said yes. Why? Because the Wells Buyer Group is getting listed on Bursa Malaysia for a Thai-based business. With the excitement and the busy, frantic schedule of getting a company listed, trust me, I've listed a company before. I have to fly all the way to Thailand to see the operations, meet the people on the ground and understand from ground zero what the secret of their growth is. But before we go over to Thailand, let me introduce you to the founder of the Wellspire Group here in the new office in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. She started her career as an entrepreneur. Back in 2012, she saw that there was a gap for sunflower seed snacks in the consumer market, but there were not many brands available in Thailand. However, she knew that the Cha Cha sunflower seeds are hugely popular in China. So, she was determined to bring them into Thailand. She took the leap of faith, and here we are today, having her in this interview as the company she founded is about to get listed in Bursa, Malaysia. เราได้มีการเราได้มีโอกาสไปสํารวจและได้ได้เจอสินค้าตัวนี้อ่าทุกห้างจะเจออ่าสินค้าไม่ได้ทันตะวันแล้วเราก็ได้เห็นว่าม
แล้วก็โชคดีที่ว่ามีพาร์ทเนอร์ที่ดีผู้ร่วมงานที่ดีแล้วก็มีที่เพื่อนเพื่อนหลายๆคนก็จะให้คำแนะนำแนะนำกลยุทธ์แล้วก็ตอนนี้ตัวของเราเองก็ยังมองหาอะไรที่เป็นแรงบันดาลใจและก็แนวคิดใหม่ๆที่จะพัฒนาบริษัทเวลสปายให้ดียิ่งขึ้น Enter the partnership It's interesting Instead of a food distribution background the CEO Mr Mo comes from the IT business I'm keen to find out the parallels in these two industries That enables Mr. Mo to drive the company to the heights it is in right now. I saw a better business model of snack food distribution business. IT business I ran before mostly uh, project based. However, the snack food distribution business is more stable because of the repeating orders made by our customers. So I think it will bring. More stability to the business. I finally flew into Thailand. It was an hour's journey into Patum Thani in the district of Rangsit, where the Well Spires warehouse is located. They've got two main structures. The latest one was completed in 2021 to expand storage and inventory. So we're currently at the Well Spire warehouse outside the outskirts of Bangkok. Uh, we're being given a tour by Jing Soon, the CFO. Really excited because it's just been a really busy few weeks. Analysts are getting excited, looking at the facilities they have. Distribution network is our core strength. You always can help select blending owner to promote their products into Thailand through our networks. They have 3,600 square meters of uh, storage space and 450 square meters of uh, chiller room space. Utilization rate is about 70% uh, for the warehouse and 30% for the cold storage space. Um, the cold storage space is more uh, in, in anticipation for the future where they'll carry cold chain products. So behind me is actually the chiller room and uh, we're getting a first-hand tour of this uh, new chiller room which will be used for future dairy products that they're going to introduce into their product line. Wellspire relies on external transportation service providers and therefore only maintain a fleet of 10 trucks to be used on an ad hoc basis for the delivery of goods to the customer sales and distribution points. We have been steadily growing the network over the past several years. Today's delivery is a midday schedule where one of the hypermarkets require a restock. The distance to this undisclosed distribution centre is only an hour away from the warehouse. These are the more popular, closer ones. They have established a network of indirect distribution channels and serve our key retail customers. Whereas the north and southern regions usually take an overnight or early morning drives. This has been our key strength and we have been steadily growing the network over the past several years. So following the supply chain, I want to now take you to one of their biggest clients. We're now at a Lotus supermarket close by to the Wellspire uh, warehouse and we're going to look at their product placement. The analyst team is already inside so let's get going. So if you notice, the product placement is actually at eye level and um, from what I understand from the CFO of uh, Wellspire, they don't actually, in Thailand, they don't actually pay premium for whether you place it at higher level or at a lower level. Um, however, this data, traffic data, whether placements here or placements here or placements here sell better, is actually not divulged by uh, Lotus over to them. It's a proprietary data that is kept by the Lotus group itself. Even today, when he was briefing the analyst group that I was humbled to join, he kept on saying that even Cha Cha, who is uh, one of them, uh, they gave them exclusive distributorship rights in Thailand. It's a two-way relationship. I give you exclusive rights, you're a certain kind of um, protection against the competitors, but you must return that trust in kind by delivering you know, better results every year, growing the sales, growing that network, you see. Most of the uh, product have a less than two months of a manufacturing date when you pick it up at a 7-Eleven. Mm. And most of the competitors, when you when you go to the 7-Eleven or any other CBS, the, you can see the manufacturing date is at least like four to six months away. That's right. That means the turnover is really fast. It's also a good um, 
independent point or independent validation that you can check other than just the financial statements, you know, because one thing investors look for is this thing called cash conversion cycle. So it's yeah. like how fast uh, you get paid, your suppliers get paid, or your clients actually pay you. Another way to check is uh, looking at the shelf life. I mean, it's so it's like two months. That means how fast that thing get, gets, gets gets off the shelf. You see, if you're going to um, build a relationship, especially a business relationship over time, it doesn't take one dinner. It takes a few dinners, getting to know the person, building trust, and then it doesn't happen overnight. And it may, while on the surface, it may seem like it's a very low barrier to entry. That trust is built over time, it's built over reliability of that relationship. And that's again something not very quantifiable on the balance sheet. And I think that's where, you know, when uh, you and I we were having meetings with uh, uh, Jing Sun, the CFO, he kept on stressing that in the Thai culture, trust is very, very important. Having lived and working in China, Singapore, and Thailand, Thai business culture is very unique in that people do value trust a lot. Uh, when we do things the right way and deliver our promise, it does go a long way in cultivating a strong level of trust. Yeah, this goes a long way in preserving the longevity of our business relationship here. As investors, we look for competitive advantage that a company has to determine the longevity of the business. For a distribution business, the strength of its relationship with its suppliers and its customers are paramount because they are not the manufacturers or the brand owners themselves. Some might think, why don't the brand owners build the distribution network themselves and have the vertical channels for themselves? Here comes the irony. Each country has its own nuance and culture where the locals have an advantage over a foreign player and this even extends to the e-commerce players. Just look at how eBay lost in China in the early 2000s, even after being in a dominant position through its acquisition of Ichnet, the largest e-commerce website in China at the time. Therefore, businesses are worn through understanding of local culture and nuances very, very well. Producing this video has allowed me to understand the Thai culture better because it's really based on trust. Once you are filtered and gotten through the door, and as long as you deliver your end of the bargain, that relationship can go on for years. In fact, save for Mega Alliance, Wellspire hasn't lost any major customers over the past 10 years, although volumes did fluctuate during COVID. Finally, spending a few days with the founder and the management team of the Wellspire Group gave me a glimpse of how they won over their customers and continue expanding. One thing I keenly observed was how the management team treated their employees, to even the drivers that were bringing us around who were treated with respect and courtesy. My best wishes to the Wellspire team. For the path you're plotting for the future and looking forward to your planned expansion across Southeast Asia. Thanks for watching, my name is John and I'll see you in the next video.